Hi everyone, this is Autopostrophe, and uh, we're going to continue our game of Lucy, the eternity she wished for. At last, another monotonous day at school of school was coming to a close, but it feels as if the lecture will go on for an eternity. Time seems to be inching along at a turtle's pace. The chalkboard is filled with scribbles that are barely decipherable. It takes much it makes it much more difficult to understand the lesson, which is already painfully tough to begin with. Ugh. I can't take this anymore. The teacher is awful at explaining things. His words go through one ear and right out the other. Unable to hold back the incoming fatigue, I let out a small yawn. Looking around me, it doesn't seem anyone else is doing much better. All the unreasonable, pushy teachers have something in common. They never explain anything in the simplest way. They always make everything seem much more complicated than it needs to be. A bunch of rotten snobs, that's what they are. Nothing in this world lasts forever. The teacher's dreadful onslaught of words ultimately comes to an end. Watching a politician give a speech is probably but much less infuriating. All that's left now is to go home. Time to get out of this place. Feeling like a prisoner who's been set free, I quickly pack up my belongings. I wave goodbye to Dr. Gears and head home. On the way, I suddenly realized something. Oh, darn it. I realize I can't use my controller to click on the text. <laughs> I'd completely forgotten about my Android at the repair shop. I almost ended up heading straight home. I double back towards my new destination. I arrive at the shop. By looking through the windows, I could see that the place isn't too busy. There are just a handful of people wandering about. But the repairman himself, I can't find him. Without hesitation, I enter the building. Antique shop, Yokoso. Welcome to the antique shop. As soon as I set my foot inside, I was immediately greeted by the, a female staff. The voice had a sweet, vibrant texture. It really caught me off guard. I'd never expected a girl to be manning the store. I guess she's a part-timer. I turn around to face a person calling out to me, and my jaw drops to the floor. You? It takes a while for her to recognize me. When she finally does, her face lights up instantly. <laughs> Master's finally here. Lucy has been waiting all day long. It was the android named Lucy Valentine who had greeted me at the door. Are my eyes playing tricks on me? There's no way that useless thing could be standing here talking to me. There isn't any hit of awkwardness in her smile. To reaffirm my suspicions, I check once more. Lucy. You're Lucy, right? Hi. Hi. Yes. <laughs> None other than Lucy Valentine. I was correct, it seems. What, what happened to you? What about Lucy, Master? That voice, and your face. And you're standing on your own, right? Yes, of course, Master. Lucy is standing on her own two feet. Hmm. Lucy puffs up her chest, looking proud. I mean, that's not really something to be proud of, but thinking back to how she was before, it was damn well impressive. You, look be you do look better now, so there's nothing wrong with you anymore? Yes, Master. Lucy feels like she could soar through the skies. After those words, she does a little ballerina spin in place. She had the appearance of a mature, well-pampered maiden, yet at the same time looked like a silly, looked silly like a child. But her spin abruptly ends and she crashes onto the floor. And there goes my peace of mind. <laughs> Still not back to normal, it seems. Lucy smiles sheepishly. While that's going on, I'm staring at her with a loss for words. Her perfectly natural, non-robotic human voice. Her purpose, her personality full of rich human emotions. Her face showing all kinds of believable expressions. 
and reactions, and her freely moving arms and legs. To say that I'm amazed would be a gross understatement. I'm so amazed that I'm at a loss for words. My brain has turned to mush. While my vocabulary has been all has all but been forgotten. I wouldn't show it on the outside, of course. Losing control of your emotions reveals your weaknesses. Well, honestly, it's not just because of that. I also didn't want to admit to her that I was surprised. What, what a change in a matter of a few hours. This is amazing. <laughs> Lucy's first compliment from Master. That makes Lucy very happy. I'm complimenting the guy who fixed you up, not you. No, impossible. The look of disappointment on her face was quite surreal. How can I possibly explain, explain this? Magic? Had she been enchanted by a witch? Old stories from childhood come to mind. The nine-tailed fox who desires to become a human. The little mermaid who also wishes to become human. What happened to them? They never ended up fulfilling their own wishes. But this robot makes me think. If that little mermaid's wish ever came true, wouldn't she be celebrating just like this? Alright, enough of these silly thoughts. I should be looking for the repairman. But the problem is, I've already spent some time searching and he's nowhere to be found. Say, what happened to the guy who put you in charge? Hi. Ah, the owner left a while ago to go shop for parts. He's not here? What about his store? Ahem. An excellent assistant is currently on duty. An assistant? Where? Hmm. Hmm. What is she talking about? I don't see anyone. Lucy, who wants to tall with pride and confidence, is now almost broken down in tears. I wish she'd stop flipping through all these different emotions. But feeling bad for her, I decide to drop the act. Okay, I get it. You're the one in charge for the time being. Yes, that's correct, Master. Lucy is the one in charge. Her expression changes faster than the speed of light. Her sadness from just a moment ago has long left the Earth in a rocket. But I honestly can't believe this guy. Leaving Lucy to take care of the store on his first day he meets her? Especially to such a ditzy robot. You need to have a few screws loose to think that this would be a smart idea. Oh, hello? What could Master be thinking about? I'm not thinking about anything. And can you stop calling me Master all the time? It's obnoxious. But, Ma Lucy, but Master is Lucy's Master. Use my name instead. But Lucy doesn't know what Master's name is. Please take this opportunity to teach her now. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure I failed the last time I tried to tell her my name. Mm, how about I just tell her whatever comes to mind? Wink. I have an even better name. The name's Mr. Handsome. Master? Master? Master mustn't lie like that. It's bad to trick other people. Lying is evil. So you're telling me that I'm ugly? No, no, no. Lucy never meant it that way. It's a mistake. A mistake. She curls up instinctively, thinking she might be scolded for messing up. Master shouldn't lie about his name. Please tell Lucy Master's real name. How absurd. Upon what basis are you claiming that your Master is not telling the truth? Lucy saw Master put his name... Lucy saw Master put his name in a while ago. Oh, come on. Even the game's working against me. Ah, uh, I don't even care anymore. Just call me Master. Hi, Master. Understood, Master. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fourth wall. That's all right, though. Master. What? Master. Master. What do you want? Lucy just wanted to say it. Are you messing with me? No, no, of course not. Lucy is just very happy to have someone call to call a master. That's why she wanted to say it. An enormous smile blooms over her face. 
How could she have such a dull personality? Was she still broken somewhere? Or was she purposely designed to be so laughable? Maybe she's on drugs? Do drugs for robots, robots even exist in the first place? I come up with a list of possibilities, but uh, obviously I wouldn't be able to find the right answer. The point is that I can't seem to keep keep up with this robot's pace. Whatever the repairman... Oh, where's the repairman when I need him? About 10 minutes later, the repairman finally returned. To tell you the truth, I was planning on approaching him first. But I never got the opportunity to do so. Because the moment he saw me, he threw away everything in his hands and charged towards me like a madman. Then he gripped both of my hands tightly. Please let me have Lucy! What kind of screwed up situation is this? He looks as if he's asking his girlfriend's father to let him marry her. I immediately announced my decision. No, I will not let you marry her. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Are you high or something? That's my line. What do you think you're doing? The owner takes some time to collect himself. <laughs> Perhaps that wasn't the best way to put it. Kid, would you ever consider selling me that android? This was completely unexpected. You want me to sell her? Yeah, I can give you this much. He takes out his calculator and shows me the figures. My mind gets numb for five seconds. Are you serious? Of course. What do you think? Not a bad deal for a student, right? Not even adults can easily find this kind of money, you know. Looking at the state of the old building, I wonder if he can really afford to spend that much. He's overexerting himself, for sure. I stare at Lucy in silence. She seems to be frozen in place. She probably wasn't expecting this to happen. She returns a pained, somber look. I can almost picture a miserable, kidnapped slave about to be shipped out to sea. Come on now, that's a little rude, don't you think? He's not about to eat you alive or anything. I turn back to face the repairman. You'd pay this much? Do you really think Lucy's is worth that kind of money? Of course! He yells in excitement. That scares me. I felt like my eardrums were about to pop. Listen carefully. Any decently priced robot model comes with an AI or module that allows them to mimic human, human emotions. You know this much, right? Yeah, somewhat. Well, creating such a module is an incredibly complex process. Even then, do you know how well they perform? Mm, to compare them to a real person, they seem a long ways off. Exactly. No matter how much effort we put into making these modules, they can only copy humans in the most basic sense. It's not yet possible for them to feel or think or to express emotions on their own. Uh, I think I'm beginning to see the picture here. Looking back at Lucy, I start to put together what he's trying to tell me. Ah, you're a sharp kid, aren't you? They teach kids pretty well these days. So, what do you think I'm trying to say? Lucy is actually a person disguised as a robot. Lucy is actually a princess under a spell. Lucy is an exceptionally well-made robot. Okay, why would you rather pick these other two? That, uh... Basically, you're telling me that Lucy is an exceptionally intelligent robot that is capable of processing natural human emotions, correct? Honestly, I was quite surprised about that as well. I'd never seen such a robot that could emulate a real person so well. Even the new models nowadays reveal their flaws after a minute-long conversation. But I couldn't sense anything particularly out of place while chatting with Lucy. I felt like I was just talking to a real person. Yep. To put it simply, this person... This is a person made out of metal. A human robot. An Iron Maiden. A revolution in the robotics industry. The guy who created Lucy must be a true genius. Hmm. That aside, good thing he caught himself before calling Lucy a certain powerful armor-wearing superhero. Nobody likes patent refreshment lawsuits. Anyway, if she was such a spectacular robot, would she ever really be thrown away like that? Uh, I'd actually found something weird. There was some sort of built-in protection feature that was stopping the robot from working properly. A protection feature? I vaguely remember what 
that was, the useless junk version of Lucy might have said something about it yesterday. Whatever it was, she seemed to be doing fine now. And you removed it? Yeah, it wasn't too difficult, since it was just one of those you put on display models. I'm just curious as to why they would bother doing such a thing before throwing it away. He appears to be lost in thought. Hmm. It might mean that the inventor wanted to keep this new technology sealed away from humanity. If not, then maybe... What if, there was a, what if there was a serious bug? That's what I thought too, so I ran some tests but found nothing. It's safe to say that she won't be harming anyone. Why would she ever want to harm people? She won't be posing any threat to people at the very least. I'm just saying that she properly obeys the three laws of robotics. Ah. The three laws of robotics. One, a robot may not injure a human being, or through inaction, allow a human to become... to allow a human being to come to harm. Ah. Sorry, those two words, when they're not connected to each other. <laughs> two, a robot must obey the orders given by human beings, except for such orders which conflict with the first law. Three, a robot must protect its own existence as, as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. These laws allow us humans to keep ro the robots in order. They make sure the humans will always have authority over robots. Major catastrophes can be prevented as long as these conditions are properly met. I've heard that if a robot ever disobeys one of the laws, it would immediately shut itself down under any circumstances. That's why they aren't glaring flaws to the system. I shift my focus back to the numbers printed on the calculator. Then I look back at Lucy. She is emitting the gaze of a forlorn puppy, causing a prickling sensation upon my face. After a moment's hesitation, she seemed to have made up her mind about something. She slowly makes her way towards me. Uh, master, sorry to interrupt, but... What's wrong? L Lucy just wanted to say that she is really capable of doing anything. That's why Lucy believes she could be a big help to Master without, with any task. Yes, and... So, um... So what? Um, that's why, uh... I never get tired of seeing Lucy look so depressed. It seems to have unleashed the hidden sadist within me. She was trying her very best to show off her charm. Essentially, she is a self-advertising product. You don't see that every day. But, willing to go this far for me, I'd be too cruel to let her go at this point. I'm not gonna make the deal, so don't worry. As I finished my sentence, the looks on their faces were different as night is were as different as night and day. The repairman sulks while Lucy breathes a sigh of relief. Anyway, she's good to go now, right? Here's the money. With quivering hands, I take out some bills from my wallet and hand it over. <sighs> my money. My money. The repairman hesitates for a moment, but finally takes it with a better with a bitter look. Uh, for now, yeah. But be careful not to put any strain on her legs for a while. It's okay to move around the house, but she should avoid any extended periods of walking. So I need to carry her home on my back again? I guess it can't be helped. She's not too heavy, so I can manage. Well, that's it for today. Thank you. His eyes are filled with regret. He, does, he really doesn't want to let Lucy go. But I flat out ignore him and prepare to leave. I'll be sure to pay you another visit if something else comes up. Okay, but make sure to treat her well. And don't overlook her. Oh, and don't overwork her too much, all right? See you later too, Lucy. You can come visit anytime. The look on his face while waving goodbye to Lucy was truly a spectacle. This time, he seemed to be the father seeing his daughter leave with another man. The guy's completely out of it. I've definitely made the right choice by keeping Lucy. We exit the shop and take a short stroll until we reach the sidewalk. I stop in my tracks. In the silence, I kneel down, facing away from Lucy. Hop on. I add an explanation to make sure she understands. That means you lightly put your arms around my neck and climb onto my back. Mm, 
Master, just a quick question. What is it? Does Master think that Lucy is dumb? Hmm? I guess I no longer have to worry about being choked to death. I feel her weight gradually shift onto my back. For a robot, she's very light. She was probably measured to weigh as a normal girl. Huh? What, what is it, Master? No, it's nothing. As soon as she climbs onto my back, I can't help but notice a fragrant aroma arising from her body. It's neither too intense nor fleeting. It gently spreads evenly along my nose. It starts with a sweet, fruity scent reminiscent of a youthful girl. Yet there is some hint of spice akin to a mature woman. It doesn't fail to stimulate the mind of a teenage boy going through puberty. This is bad. I've never experienced something like this. It didn't happen this morning, but why now? It's probably because of the smell. It wasn't there earlier. Feeling a little faint, I desperately try to get a grasp of the situation. Master's heart is rapidly increasing. Is something the matter? She's measuring my heart rate? That's not fair. I feel a little embarrassed for revealing that I'm a nervous wreck right now. Unable to hold back, I decide to be honest to myself. The smell, what is it? Ah, is it because of that? The man at the shop gave Lucy all sorts of gifts. He told Lucy that since she's a girl, she needs to take good care of herself. She takes out a bottle of perfume amongst many other makeup accessories. Jeez, that guy is scary. Really scary. He's the type of person who'd spend the whole day forcing his pet dog into different clothing. If you consider that as an animal abuse, wouldn't this be some kind of robot harassment? Hmm. Well, I don't know. All this stuff just for a robot? Huh, what a silly guy. <laughs> Why are you laughing? No reason. <laughs> Had I just been seduced by a robot? Well, there goes all my dignity as a human being. Is it too heavy? What are you going on about now? I purposely try to sound irritated. It doesn't affect her in any way, however. Lucy's body, is it too heavy for Master? Of course you're heavy. You're lighter than I expected. Well, you're lighter than I expected. Is that really true? Yeah. Does Master really mean it? Master isn't planning to drop Lucy off a cliff while she's basking in happiness. Is that supposed to be funny? Have you been have you been deceived all of your life? Maybe I was being too rough on her. I didn't think she'd start being so skeptical. Before I ruined her completely, I decided to treat her a little kinder from now on. I hear a small giggle coming from my back. Would a robot really feel that flatter to be called light? I don't know. Humans can't be expected to understand a robot's heart. Soon enough, the streets become immersed with the orange glow of this evening sun. The scenery was changing more slowly than usual today. Maybe it's because I've been carrying Lucy on my back. But it's not that a lot of time had passed. Winter was just on its way. As evidenced by these increasingly shorter days, Lucy hasn't said anything for a while. Steele glanced at her, wonder wondering if she's asleep, but she's not. She appears to be lost in thought, staring at every sight, staring at everything in sight. She looks like a child inside a pleasant dream. I can see her eyes sparkling. Is it really that fascinating? What does Master mean by that? This place. Oh, yes. It's quite marvelous. I can't say I agree with that. Unlike downtown, there aren't many distractions here to keep us busy. Nor are we near any beautiful landscapes. We're just walking down a plain old street that you can find anywhere. What part of this place do you find marvelous? Everything. Everything? Yes, absolutely everything. In the past, Lucy always needed permission to go outside. 
Lucy didn't have many chances to wander the streets like this. Yes, so basically, it's fascinating to see the way everything changes around Lucy as she moves about. A fresh, new sight to behold, one after the other, being able to take in everything at Lucy's own pace. Lucy finds that delightful. That's why everything looks so marvelous. I see. I couldn't relate to the sensation she just described. What is it? Lucy is very sorry. What's with you all of a sudden? I'm caught off guard by the unexpected apology. Had she really done anything wrong? Lucy was being too chatty and annoying today. She is very sorry. Lucy is supposed to be calm and understanding of others, but... I found it strange how Lucy was telling me what kind of person she was supposed to be. If anyone, if anyone other than Lucy had told me the same thing, I'd probably have laughed at them. Anyone but myself will never be able to find out what kind of person he truly is. Sitting in front of a mirror reveals all the flaws of your body. Sitting in front of a person reveals all the flaws of your personality. If you ever want to find something out about yourself, it needs to be reflected back, at, back to you by something else. That's why attempting to describe your own personality is the same as describing what kind of person you'd actually want to be. It'd be just a bunch of pretentious nonsense. But this is only the case for humans. Lucy is an android. She's not human. That's why it doesn't sound strange coming from her. Lucy was probably just happy to be able to greet her first master. It's also been a while since Lucy was last activated, so that was a bit exciting too. It was such a natural explanation about how she felt. She was happy to meet her first master. And she was happy to be able to finally move around again. You've never served any uh, anyone else before? No, Master is Lucy's first. Is that so? So she's a new model that no one has ever touched. That line of thinking sounds dirty, but that's not what I mean. Lucy really enjoyed her time back at the lab. The researchers were also very kind. Lucy talked about a lot of things with everyone and learned a lot too. A lab, did you say? Oh, I'm sure they treated her well. Whenever Lucy said something interesting, or whenever Lucy did something as she was told to do, they were very happy. They would say, Lucy is very smart, and pat Lucy's head. Lucy liked that very much. That's why Lucy decided to learn a lot more and do a lot more things. And they came to love Lucy even more. They were probably just testing her abilities. In my mind, I find the whole scenario unsettling. To Lucy, however, it is a treasured memory of her past. But there is an important question to be yet to be answered. Then why were you abandoned? I have always been mean to ask her, but I can't easily bring myself to do so. I ask myself why. Maybe it's because I'm starting to care about this robot's feelings? I shake my head. That's just plain nuts. It's only because she sounds like a real person. It's a dangerous thought. Let's get, out, let's get it out of my head. I blurt out the question. Then why were you abandoned? Lucy goes silent. Nothing is said for a while. The quietness stretches into an awkward silence. I start to regret asking the question. Because no one loved Lucy anymore. With those words, Lucy finally breaks the silence. Somewhere along the line, they stop smiling at Lucy. They stopped praising Lucy. Eventually, they forgot about Lucy. While running on reserve power, Lucy could only keep track of the passing of time. Doing absolutely nothing, it felt like an eternity. Those days went on and on. Then, then one day... Lucy goes silent once more. Then one day, she found herself left in the dust, is what she probably wanted to say. Maybe they didn't do something about her. But, or they found a significant flaw within her design. But I don't like the fact that they had just tossed her aside, giving her so much love and attention. Aren't they being too inconsiderate? A small rage boils inside me, directed to those cruel researchers with no sense of responsibility. When I rega regain my senses after a few seconds, I become surprised at how angry I was. What was I thinking? They were just throwing away a failed experiment. 
The object on, on my back is nothing more than an impressive fake. She's not real. She's not a living creature. It's only natural that useless machinery is thrown away. It's only natural that... Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's no need for me to be so angry. Master. Master's pulse is rising again. Is something wrong? It's nothing. And stop measuring that all the time. But Lucy is programmed to record Master's temperature automatically. Then this, then it's an order. I order you not to measure anything from now on. An order? Then Lucy has no choice. There is another silence, but this time not an unpleasant one. But Lucy is very thankful towards Master. I just can't seem to figure out this robust train of thought. What? Lucy doesn't know how much time she pa has passed since she was thrown away. But judging by Lucy's own temperature, it seems that a long time has passed. Lucy was always surrounded by darkness, and she could never sense any human presence. It was very dark. It was very quiet. Lucy was feeling very lonely. Then suddenly, Lucy heard a gentle voice. I don't remember talking to you like that. But to Lucy, it was like a soft, tender whisper from an angel. At last, in that dark abyss, the light that Lucy had, had lost so long ago had finally returned. It was Master who found Lucy. You're overreacting. She's definitely going overboard with this. I just happened to notice her while casually passing by. Lucy tried her hardest to make noise. Master noticed Lucy. Lucy pushed and pulled her body with all her might. And then, Lucy's once frozen hands had miraculously started moving. They were only a few words which didn't contain any significant meaning. And it was only on a moment's whim that I'd taken her home. But I was surprised those simple actions were such a big help to the robot. Lucy is very thankful that Master has taken her in. Being able to say the most embarrassing things without hesitation, I guess that's one of the advantages of being a robot. I could feel my face beginning to flush. I quickly duck in order to hide my embarrassment. Shut up. I'm gonna make you pay for, for what you're worth, so you'd better be ready for it. Hi, master. Yes, Master. Lucy's prepared. <laughs> What's so funny? Why do you keep laughing like that? It's creeping me out. Lucy doesn't know. She cannot contain her laughter. Maybe it's a malfunction. What should Lucy do? <laughs> Lucy quietly rests her cheeks on my shoulder. The sensation of her soft skin causes me to flinch. She feels very much different. She feels very... She feels very much different compared to this morning. It's as if I'm carrying a real person on my back instead of a robot. I start to wonder what could be causing the difference in perception. Was it just a placebo effect? Or had something really changed since this morning? If something really did change, was it me? Or the robot? I continue to ponder over the question on the way home. I never managed to come up with an answer. Three laws of robotics. Oh boy, they really are driving this home, huh? It must mean something because uh, we see it so often. Ah, oh, the darn cell phone. <laughs> I need to stay away from this thing. October 13th, you. I unlock the front door and enter the house. Unlike usual, I could sense someone's presence inside. I hear a couple voices coming from the television inside the living room. My father appears to have returned home early. It makes me feel uneasy. I effortlessly, effortlessly remove my shoes, using only my feet. Come to think of it, I was always home alone. 
It's been this way ever since I'd grown old enough to take care of myself. Before that, we used to have a housekeeper watching over the place. However, that was only until I began middle school. From then on, I was always by myself. I would eat breakfast alone. I would eat dinner alone. The cycle would repeat endlessly. I don't even remember the last time all of us ate dinner together as a family. There's no such thing as a home-cooked meal in this household. I've eaten so many different kinds of instant foods in my life that I've come to memorize every product of every brand. My father puts his work before family. And my new mother follows my father everywhere to support him while practically ignoring me. That is my family. At this point, it feels out of place to see someone actually home. My father is on the couch watching television. You're back. He doesn't even turn around to face me. It implies that he's not in a good mood. Yes, father. You're very late. I checked the time. It wasn't actually that late. There are times when I'd get back much later. I wonder if this man even knows how old I am. Where have you been wandering around for so long? Don't you know that you'll be in college soon? I don't bother replying. Says the guy who never paid any attention to me. I think to myself, I don't get along too well with my father. Our relationship compares badly with other families. But that is to be expected. We've never spent much quality time together. Going to the zoo, or playing soccer together. I don't have any of those fond memories like other kids my age probably have. My earliest memories are of my father's stern face. So it would, so it would be even more bizarre if we actually got along. As I stand in silence, the old man launches his next attack. Are you not listening to me? He still doesn't bother. He still doesn't bother looking at me. I've gotten used to minding my own business. We keep to our own devices. To solve any conflicts within a family, you would normally need to sit down together and talk about it. But my father doesn't think there's any need for that. He thinks everything is fine the way it is. It'd be really painful to talk face to hit face with that man, though. I just stopped by somewhere on the way home. Yeah, I'll just deal with our usual exchange. As long as I don't make him angry, that's good enough for me. I just need to be maintain the peace between us. It's always been this way. As usual, I try my best not to rock the boat. I don't know what you kids are up to these days, but remember that students like you should be studying. I'm saying this for your sake. So stop hanging around those with those brats who only care about having fun. You can't afford to lose sight of your main goal. Stay focused. I'll be going to my room now. With that said, I tried to make my escape. Our conversation would normally end about here, but Lucy, who'd been silent all this time, decides to whisper something in my ear. Um, pardon Lucy, but would that person be Master's father? I hesitate whether to tell her or not. In the end, I quietly whisper back, yeah. Lucy taps my shoulder. Master, please, put, please let Lucy down. I have no choice but to grant her a wish. Maybe Lucy's voice had caught him by surprise. Because my father finally turned to face me. He's wearing a, bewil a bewildered look. Who's your guest? With a wide smile, Lucy grabs onto the ledges of her skirt, at the edges of her skirt. She then performs a flawless curtsy that would make a princess envious. Hello. Before father is an android with limitless capabilities, Lucy Valentine. Lucy will be in father's care from now on, so she hopes she will get along nicely, nicely with everyone. What? It's just a robot? His attitude changes completely. The sharpness in his voice penetrates every part of my body. But Lucy doesn't seem to notice. Or rather, she's pretending not to. She continued with a smile. Cooking, cleaning, the laundry? Please leave everything to Lucy. Household chores are no match for Lucy. Hmm. I'm sorry, but there's nothing we need from a robot in this family. I suggest that you go look for somewhere else to stay. <laughs> Please excuse Lucy, but there's a lot more she can do than just simple chores. Uh-oh, this is not looking good. Meanwhile, Lucy continues to ramble on, 
completely oblivious to what is about to happen. Lucy can also help the father's previous concerns regarding his son. Lucy is the perfect educational tool with access to lectures given by world-renowned professors from various universities. She's talking about as if she's about to become my personal tutor. Lucy has lots more features. She has sewing, plumbing, and... Just where do you get this piece of junk? Get out of my sight! His anger... His angry outburst is as sudden as it is intense. It catches Lucy off guard. She stumbles backwards in alarm. No surprises here. I saw all this coming a mile away. It's a present from a friend. I lie instinctively. If I honestly tell him that I found her in the trash, he'd definitely force me to take her back there. I'll just say that I got her from Dr. Gears. My father knows his manners. There's no way he'll make me throw away a present. Ha, <laughs> really? You haven't stopped being a troublemaker since you were little. What have I always told you? Robots are ruining society. Did you forget about all of that? My father has always been like this. Robots are becoming increasingly more common. They're gradually making their way into our daily lives, but my parents consider them as intruders infiltrating human society. They're unable to catch up with the shifts in technology whilst they refuse to let go of the traditional ways. They simply refuse to coexist with robots. Thanks to that, I grew up hearing nothing but bad things about robots. But what's wrong with keeping one around the house? What's wrong, you ask? I've read that most family own ro robots nowadays. Why can't we just keep one around for convenience? I've clearly just added fuel to the fire. Convenience? Think about the type of people that care about convenience. Convenience makes us lazy. And when we're lazy, our minds don't work properly. Convenience makes our minds weak. It's, obviously how, it's obvious how they'll live the rest of their lives without realizing that they're hopelessly lazy. Just They'll just end up living a meaningless existence. I've already lost count of how many times I've heard this from him. Today's lecture is variant B. It goes from A to Z, by the way. I'm so sick of this. I just want to wrap up the conversation so I can leave as soon as possible. Uh, anyway, I've accepted it already, so we should keep it. I'm the one who's going to be using it, so why do you care? And who's the one who's going to be paying for the electricity? Who taught you to be so selfish? Mm, I'm starting to reach my limit. Come on. I don't want... I just want to leave. And then I'll pay for it. I can get a part-time job. A job? You're going to get a job? You're going to work? When, when you should be studying? Yes. Do you even realize how important this phase is in your life? These years in high school could decide the rest of your future. With those permission... With whose permission are you planning to work? Do you really expect to be able to... Uh, do you really expect to be able to take after me without any effort? Kids like you should be studying. Just keep your mouth shut and study. Well, I'll pay you back when I grow up, so just leave me alone, damn it. I scream at the top of my lungs. His eyes widen in shock. This, that was to be expected. I never raised my voice in front of my parents before. You can't do this. You can't do that. Then just what the heck do you expect me to do? I'm so furious that I can almost feel steam rising from my head. At the same time, my father's, my father's eyes quickly narrow and begin to burn with rage. Time slows down, and I'm left struggling to process what had just happened. I stand in place, holding my sore cheeks as I stare at my father in shock. Not knowing what to do, Lucy is fidgeting nonstop. Just where did you learn to be so stubborn? I never raised you this way! Shocked and humiliated, I can no longer calm my fiery soul. I turn around and stomp off towards my room. I pull Lucy along with me. Master! Oh, Master! Hesitating, Lucy eventually, Lucy eventually makes, takes a short bow to my father and trails along. Behind me, I hear my father yelling. But I shut it all out as blind rage is nearly overpowering. Entering my room, I lock the door behind me. I hear my father yelling as he continues banging on my door for a while. I'm not sure how many minutes have gone, have gone by. It feels like an eternity. Even if I block my ears, I can still sense the floor shaking. I curl up my body and wait for a moment to pass.
clock slowly ticks away. After a long while, I uncover my ears. The noises have stopped, and I finally begin to relax. As my head eventually clears up, I realize what I've done. <sighs> I'd finally lost control. I've yelled at my father for the first time in my life. It's been a while since the last time I, I was hit by my father. It was like the rupturing of a dam after so much pressure and strain. Thinking back, it's strange that we never had any direct confrontations like this one. Our relationship has been an unstable bomb, but I'd always managed to prevent it from going off. But today was different. Well, it was bound to happen sooner or later. <sighs> I try to slow down my breathing. Oh, no. Um, Master? Lucy calls out to me cautiously. What is it? Um, is Master all right? I wonder what she means by all right. Nothing's all right. But I know what she meant. So I give her a small nod anyway. With a wet handkerchief from who knows where, Lucy wipes down my sweaty forehead. The fruity smell of her perfume is surprisingly calming. Master, with all due respect, what is it? It's not right to use that sort of language with Master's father. My face quickly becomes contorted with anger. What the heck? Are you telling me I'm a bad person? Lucy shakes her head. Lucy isn't saying that Master is bad, but she thinks that Master should be polite towards his parents. It's Master's family. Father was probably very hurt inside. Oh, you don't think that I, oh, you don't think that I'm bad, huh? When you're the one telling me that it's my fault entirely? I was the one hurt, and he was the one who hurt me. My head is aching, so just drop it and leave me alone. Lucy, who had been squirming about, goes completely still. Both her eyes suddenly lose their color. After a while, she springs back to life. Master, in regards to the information on Lucy's memory chip, investigating various scenarios regarding family conflicts showing that the conversation between Master and his father was found to be one of the least desirable outcomes. What are you talking about? Logically speaking, it means that additional repercussions may arise from this incident if Master takes no action. To solve this issue, Master should recognize his mistakes and apologize to... Shut up! Your explanations don't even make sense and you're calling it logical? You wouldn't understand a thing anyway. Hi. Huh? What wouldn't Lucy understand? What can you possibly tell from watching us for just five minutes? What did you? What exactly did you find out about us? How can you say something so ignorant without any knowing about the past 18 years we spent together? The android tilts its head, looking confused. Answer this. How many minutes are there in a day? 1,444 minutes. How many in a year? 5,256... Oh, no. 52,500... Uh, wait, wait. 525... <laughs> 525,600 minutes. I'm just so used to seeing dots or... <laughs> commas. Just to see it all as one big number. Blah. Then what about 18 years? 9,460,800 minutes. As expected from a robot, her calculations are quick and accurate. That's right. Out of the 9,460,800 minutes I've spent with my father, you've only seen five. That's less than 0.001%, an insignificant amount. It's my fault that you had to witness something like this. But that man is always finding the smallest excuse to teach me things that only he himself believes. Think of it as throwing out an entire pan of pizza because of a single burnt piece of pepperoni. What is the logic to that? Lucy's eyes lose their focus. It's just like before. Could she be looking something up inside her memory chip again? Or maybe she's doing some a search online. She returns after a moment. Sorry. Lucy doesn't understand what Master is saying. I figured as much. Cause and effect. The universe operates on this principle. If a father neglects his son, then of course the son would neglect his father in return. Who's that bigger fault here? But, Master... What? Going back to the pizza, by simply replacing the burnt piece of pepperoni, it would become a perfect, as perfect as a whole. How much longer can I argue with this smiling, carefree robot? I lie down on my bed, hugging my throbbing head. 
I let out one of my trademark phrases. This is why I hate robots. They're all so stupid. Lucy appears to be brooding over something. After a while, she finally speaks up again. Master, Master Lucy truly does believe that one side always needs to take the initiative in order to solve a problem. Then why should I be the one apologizing? I'm not the bad guy here. Even if that's not the case, Lucy still thinks that's important to do so. Not gonna happen. Shouldn't the old guy be more mature and understanding? I'm a high school student. I do stuff on impulse. You get it? Do you get what I mean by that? Oh. Master's talking about the age when people go around and smashing through windows while riding motorbikes and such, yes? Uh, kind of exaggerated, but as long as she gets my point. Yeah. I'm one of those ki kids these days that the adults are always going on about. It's natural that I'd have trouble controlling my emotions, so don't expect much from me. To be honest, I do think I'm way more mature than the other kids at my, ma my age. This is all irrelevant, though. I'm sure anyone would take their family matters very seriously. But wouldn't it be easier for father to apologize? But it won't be easy for father to, father to apologize. How do you know? It's because of his personality. <laughs> You've learned so much from meeting him for just a few minutes. You're really impressive, I tell you. How long Lucy has known Master and his family is not of concern. Lucy has all kinds of information available to her at her fingertips. And according to various sources... Sources? What kind of sources? Wikipedia? Reddit? 4chan? Ignoring my outburst, Lucy continues. Upon analyzing Father's actions in great detail, Lucy concludes that he, is, that he possesses the typical characteristics of a male leader. He is very stubborn, assertive, and prefers an aggressive approach. Okay, and... It's difficult to change the way a person lives his life. It would be better for Master to reach out to him first. By the way... Yes. If you want me to take make up with my father, that means I'll have to throw you out. He's not the type of person to make any compromises. Have you even realized this? <gasps> huh. I guess not. Uh, well, what should Lucy do? It'd be bad if that actually happened. <laughs> don't ask me. Why don't you think before you talk next time? I shake my head. The reason behind this mess of a conversation is the fact that I'm talking to a robot. Sometimes I forget that she's a robot in the first place. Sometimes it's reversed, where I end up deliberately pointing out her flaws as a robot. And then everything in my head gets mixed up. This robot really knows how to stress people out. D d again? Wow. Is this going to change at some point in time? I'm, I'm not going to notice. Like, we're just going to click through this and they change one of the laws. <laughs> it's something I would do. If, well, maybe I'm going to do it in my own game. But it's something I would do, at least theoretically. May 11th. Doctor. Oh, oh we're talking to the doctor again. Lucy. Lucy. Lucy Valentine. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Lucy Valentine. Yes, Lucy Valentine. That is your name. Lucy, Lucy, and you are? Do you recognize who I am? Lucy slowly shakes her head. Is that so? I continue. I'm Dr. Ryu. And this is K Robotics Research Lab. 
connector. Yes, Dr. Liu. I am... I am your creator. My creator? Yes. My creator, Dr. Ryu. Dr. Ryu. Yes, Ryu. That is my name. It's funny to be saying all of this now, but yes. Ryu, that's my name. It's a bit late. It's a bit l of a late introduction, but be sure to cherish it and remember it. Yes, Dr. Ryu. Three laws of robotics. Uh-huh. Again. Uh, this must be like their version of a loading screen. <laughs> October 14th. You. Ah, oh, back to us again. Da? Master. Da? Master. My body's being shaken from side to side. Da? Master, something is shaking my body. <sighs> Wake up, Master. Uh, what do you want? Still feeling drowsy, I tried my hardest to overcome the weight of my dropping eyelids. I finally managed to force them open. I'll close up with my eyes. <laughs> I know, I totally read the wrong thing. And right before me was a pair of blue eyes the size of frying pans. Ah! I stare at Lucy in bewilderment as I find myself falling off my bed. It's morning, Master. It's morning now. Did you enjoy your sleep? Before I make any attempt to talk back to her, I decide to check the time. It was earlier than usual. I let out a big yawn. It's so early in the morning. Before I could ask why I was woken up so ahead of schedule, I start to sniff. I could smell something delicious. My room was filled with moth-watering scent. I tell myself that the neighbors must be cooking up something good. Then Lucy suddenly opens her mouth. Breakfast will be ready soon. Those words were the most unexpected. Did you just say breakfast? Lucy tried preparing something from the leftovers in the fridge. She hopes it will be able. She hopes that it will be to Master's liking. Breakfast. The word had a nostalgic ring to it. When was the last time I'd eaten something other than fast food for breakfast? Oh, are there any dishes that Master dislikes in particular? No. Any ingredients then? No. Nothing like that. I wanted to say carrots and cucumbers, but I decided against it. I didn't want to be seen as an immature kid complaining about his food. It just doesn't fit my cool, intellectual image. Still, I haven't fully woken up yet. I confirm my understanding with Lucy once more. So, you're telling me you've made breakfast? Hi. Yes, Lucy tried putting her skills to the test. It will be ready in ten minutes, so please have a drink while Master waits. A cup of water is presented to me. I was just starting to get a little thirsty, too. As I grab hold of the cup, its pleasant coolness spreads along my skin. I feel embarrassed about following Lucy's orders, so I decide to take a small complaint. So I decide to take a small complaint as I put the cup to my lips. Next time, you should wake me up when the food's actually ready. Lucy can't do that because it's unhealthy to eat before a master's stomach has fully awoken. Drinking a cup of water is necessary to get the insides moving. Only then, master can enjoy his food. How annoying. What a strict one this robot is. I enjoy the feeling of cold water pouring down my throat and quenching my thirst. It feels like my insides are being cleansed thoroughly. Suddenly I realize how absurd this situation is. The fact that someone is preparing breakfast for me. Could I still be dreaming? I feel like I'm on cloud nine. Lucy cheerfully skips down the, towards the kitchen. 
I only continue to stare at her blankly. Ten minutes have passed. Only now I feel more awake. It's a pain to move my body. It's a pain how my body is really slow to start itself up. I begin to feel hungry. The smell of Lucy cooking motivates me to drag myself out of bed. I head straight towards the kitchen table. I am stunned by the veritable feast laid out before me. A cloud of white steam is rising from the bowl of rice. The soup is boiling with intensity. The sound is making music to my ears. And there is a perfectly prepared fish along with a variety of side dishes. It would be shameful to compare this to a lunchbox from a convenience store. Appearing to have sensed my delight, Lucy smiles pleasantly. Her voice is full of teas. <laughs> I feel a sense of defeat. I begin to feel frustrated for no particular reason. I want to say something in reply, but decide to hold back. I take a seat in silence as I lift my spoon. How does it taste? I haven't even taken a bite yet. What's the rush? Just hold on a second. Yes, yes, please start before the food gets cold. Lucy takes a seat at the opposite end of the table. While striking a sly pose with a hand on her chin, she urges me to eat. It was as if the food was suddenly going to disappear if I didn't start soon. She's gazing at me intently. She's trying not to make it obvious, but I can tell that she's very eager to see my reaction. Whatever I say next will, deci will decide what her face will show. I take a spoon of the glossy white rice and put it in my mouth. It's good. Perfect flavor and texture. While I'm at it, let's try some side dishes, too. Mmm, marvelous. She really wasn't lying about her cooking skills. Let's be fair, though. She probably no only knows the best recipes from around the world. And since she's a robot, there wouldn't be any inconsistencies in her cooking. If they had programmed her to be a top-level chef, then this was to be expected. There's nothing to be surprised about. Hmm, but a robot is just a robot. She wouldn't be able to top something that Mama used to make, as they say. Although, personally, I, could ne I never had the opportunity to taste my mother's cooking, so I can't compare. Looking back at Lucy, who was still staring at me with great anticipation, I think about what I should say. I can feel an aura of confidence around her, yet she appears to be worried at the same time. She's expecting me to say something. I finally make my reply. It tastes alright, I guess. Blah, this is horrible. Oh, really? I can't give her a real compliment? <laughs> if something tastes good, I would actually say, yeah, it tastes good. Why would I do this? This is kind of a dick move, but I am sort of a hipster, right? At least in the game I am, huh? Well, it tastes all right, I guess. <sighs> what a relief. Even with my meek response, she lets out a big sigh of relief. Lucy was so worried that Masher might not enjoy her cooking. Lucy was lacking the initial data. You don't need to concern yourself with that. I've been eating fast food all my life. I'll eat anything, even if you make me some porridge from pig intestines. <laughs> Is that how Lucy's cooking tastes like? Please forgive Lucy for her lack of skills. Lucy truly is a failure of an android. She actually looks pretty depressed about this. She looks as if she's about to run off while leaving behind a trail of tears. Am I supposed to chase after her while holding a piece of bread in my mouth or something? No, that's not what I meant. I'm saying that it tastes better than I would, ex than what I'd expected. So you don't need to beat yourself up over it. Is that true? Yeah. Can Lucy really trust Master with those words? Mm-hmm. It doesn't take long for Lucy to cheer up and start humming away happily. It's nice that she's easy to deal with. I continue to eat in silence while checking up on her after every few spoonfuls. I can tell how much time has passed. The bowl of rice I've been eating from started to show its bottom. I steal a glance at the clock. It's not yet time to leave for school. While revealing, reveling in my satisfaction, I decide to sit back in my chair and chill out for a bit. Some time passes. While cleaning up the empty dishes, Lucy asked me a question. Her tone was quite delicate, as if to soothe a small animal. 
Um, pardon Lucy for asking, but there's something she's been wondering about since yesterday. What is it? Um, she seemed to be hesitating, so I gave her a little push. Go ahead. The reason why Master hates robots, is it due to father's influence? The question catches me off guard. All the unpleasant memories involving my father come flying back. I slowly realized that my chopsticks were frozen in midair. Without missing a beat, I continued to deliver food to my mouth. In an attempt to hide my surprise, I purposely give a curt answer. Well, I guess you could say that. Nothing will change. Nothing will change from denying it. I put down my chopsticks and lock eyes with Lucy. This robot just... This robot's just laid to waste the values and beliefs I've had for the past 18 years. Keeping my eyes on the robot, I muse. Now that I think about it, I was probably brainwashed. By brainwashed, does that master mean... I've heard nothing but awful things about robots since I was a little ki since I was little. Robots are bad. Robots make us ill. Robots harm society. I grew up listening to all that. I grew up listening to that all the time, so it sort of just rubbed off on me. The previous generation of IT. Now the generation of robots. As long as we live sandwiched between two generations, there's bound to be people advocating against new technologies such as robots. There are plenty of people out there who are strongly opposed to the the production of robots. My father is a prime example. Similar to what happened during the Industrial Revolution, the effects of this profound new technology is gradually expanding across the globe. Robots are slowly taking away people's jobs opportunities. It costs less to maintain robots than to pay employee salaries. Robots never complain, and they're consistent in their performance, unlike people. They don't feel any stress or pain, and they never mess around. It'd be much easier to deal with a robot than to fuss over a troublesome worker. We're only beginning to find out what kind of changes robots will bring to our society. Unemployment is getting out of control, and the newly formed jobs are being handled by robots. This is why many people shun robots. No one understands whether this is a temporary phenomenon arising from the drastic changes in our lifestyle, or if it's a type of psychological disease. It'll only become clearer as time goes on. One thing I can say for sure is that there's always been a divide amongst the population, as made evidence by the ludicism movement in the 1800s. Some are more willing to accept this new technology. Some are not. To me, a world run by robots doesn't seem too promising. It was too late by the time I'd finally grow old enough to be able to think for myself. It's not as simple as just changing my perspective. Because maybe I still would have turned out like this even without my father's influence. My hatred for ro robots has simply become part of my life now. The most horrifying part of my brainwashing is that you can never fight against it. It's technically impossible to bend someone completely to your will. You can't do anything about people act acting loyal on the outside but, depressing, but despising you on the inside. Brainwashing is something different, however. Because the person wouldn't have the knowledge to think for himself in the first place. And it's possible to take advantage of this bit by bit. As long as the victim never comes to realize this, he'll never be able to retaliate. There's also There also needs to be a compelling reason for him to change. Even with a good reason, it's likely that he won't be willing to accept it. Because if he did, he'd be going against all the beliefs he'd held for his entire life. It would crumble the foundation of his very existence. The older the person becomes, the harder it becomes for him to admit that he has been in the wrong. Who knows? Maybe I would never have come to hate robots. It's too late for me to start thinking about that now, though. Lucy. Lucy. Lucy really hopes that Master and his father will become to appreciate robots and appreciate Lucy. She wants to get along with everyone. Upon hearing that, I unknowingly let out a bitter laugh. You saw what my father did to me when he found out you're a robot. You're asking for the impossible. It'd be a relief in itself if nothing happened to you behind my back. Lucy understands that, but her, wish to rem her wishes remain the same. I sigh softly. She's failing to think logically as a computer. Even after hearing my father wants to throw you out, how could you still hope for something like that? If, 
person A hates person B, it's likely that person B will come to hate person A. At least that's how it is in normal human relationships. So how come Lucy can't grasp this? Because she's very patient and forgiving? No way. It's because she's a robot that knows how to suppress its emotions. It's because she isn't human. Lucy thinks that father is just as kind-hearted as master is. Lucy can tell. That's why she hopes he will maintain a healthy relationship with master. And with Lucy too, of course. You're already mistaking by calling me kind-hearted. It's not just father's. And it's not just father. She just ignored me. That little... Master, the man at the repair shop and research at the lab, they're all nice people. To be, to be of a big help to everyone, including Master. That is Lucy's mission and her wish. It definitely sounds like something a robot would say. It doesn't seem like she's capable of sorting out the good from the bad. I can't help but give a cynical reply. In the end, we're the same. You've also been brainwashed, but in a different way. Lucy slightly tilts her head to the side. She seems to do what that whenever she's confused about something. Master. Could Master elaborate? You will love humans. That's essentially what's been programmed into your main system. You have no free will. That's just an illusion. You have no choice but to act this way. Hmm. She tilts her head from side to side. She doesn't seem to understand. You want to help everyone, right? Hi. Yes, of course. And you're happy when you help people. Yes, Lucy is very happy. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that you want to help others and that you feel happy once you do? Mm. Lucy has no clue. It's because the program those researchers put inside you is forcing you to feel this way. Really? Yeah, your will and your personality are yours. But at the same time, they aren't. They're from people that made you. They're programmed, they programmed you this way and you're simply following orders. You're nothing but a puppet on a stage whose strings are being pulled. It may look like it's moving by itself at first glance, but it's actually being held up by wires. And there are people behind the stage controlling these wires. That's who you are. You're only moving according to how they want you to move. Lucy's pupils, uh, the pupils in Lucy's eyes diminish. She appears to be in deep thought. Lucy still doesn't understand what Master is saying. I'm saying that your actions have no actual meaning. You're just a toy made to do certain things at a certain time. Nothing about you is real. There's no significance. Do you understand? The mind, its emotions, and its intuition on the inside. The body, its movements, and its reactions on the outside. If they're just part of a computer algorithm created by someone, then they aren't genuine. Any gestures, and any sentiments, there's no meaning behind them. I stress that idea over and over again. Something like that doesn't have any meaning. That isn't true, Master. She startles me with a sudden rebuttal. I wasn't expecting that from her. What are you talking about? There definitely is a meeting. Lucy knows. You're saying that there is a meaning? You still don't get it? You were made to be friendly with humans through a program. It's not by your own choice. Your actions and feelings, they're all artificial. That's why they're meaningless. It doesn't matter where Lucy's feelings come from. What? No matter what Lucy, no matter who's controlling Lucy, if Lucy helps someone, that person will be happy. And if he's happy, Lucy will be even happier. Because Lucy was able to help someone in need. In the end, both that person and Lucy will be happy. And Lucy is satisfied with that. Even if she's created for this purpose, even if she is acting on someone else's will, that is not important to Lucy at all. The fact that Lucy helped someone, how Lucy felt while helping someone, how Lucy was thanked for helping someone, Master may call such feelings fake, because Lucy was made to feel and act this way. But to Lucy, this is very much real, and this is where she finds meaning in her life. Nonsense. My name is Lucy Valentine. Lucy states her name, as if she's announcing herself before a crowd. She also did not refer to herself in third person. The name Lucy comes from a Latin word meaning light. To become a messenger of hope, that's how Lucy interprets her name. Helping people, finding a sense of accomplishment. This is what Lucy lives for. 
This warm, this warm, fuzzy feeling in her heart after helping someone. Even if she was made to feel this way, those feelings are definitely real to Lucy. And that is why she will continue to help people. I tried to say something back, but the words never came out. It felt as if there was something stuck in my throat. It wasn't exactly because I agreed with her, and it wasn't because I was touched by her words either. I actually thought she was very stubborn. As stubborn as a mule. It was rather because of how Lucy appeared so mature and real. The way she confidently stated her opinion. Nothing about her was as remotely close to my idea of a robot. That was why I could only sit in silence. I headed to school with my mind in a haze of confusion. My emotions were in turmoil. October 14th, you. The shrill noise of the lunchtime bell rings in the, in the distance. Immediately, the classroom begins to bustle with excitement. As soon as the teacher leaves the room, Dr. Gears turns to face me. You're buying some bread, right? Come on, let's go together. He stands up and offers to go to the cafeteria with me. Even though he already has his own lunch, he's a good guy. However, I had no reason to go to the cafeteria today. No, today's fine. What do you mean, it's fine? You're not planning to get anything? Nope, not today. Don't tell me you're going on a diet. You're not going to grow if you starve yourself at this age, you know. No, what I'm saying is that I don't need to buy anything. With that said, I quietly take out a lunchbox and place it on top of my desk. What? Dr. Gear stares at the lunchbox in astonishment. I remove the lid to reveal its contents. The food inside looks scrumptious. It's giving off a pleasant scent. The presentation is excellent. I notice that the menu is different from what I'd eaten for breakfast. She could have just picked up the leftovers and saved herself the trouble of making something anew. Does she think that'll be that I'll be pleased by this? Uh, does she think I'll be pleased about this? Well, to be honest, I'm a little happy. What the heck is this? It looks just like a lunchbox. It doesn't look like a lunchbox. It is one. What's going on? You couldn't have possibly made it yourself. Was it your mother? Wrong. If my new mother had actually paid that much attention to me, I could have probably grown up a normal human being. Yeah, I didn't think so. Then who... Could it be that you... He's pretty sharp. He seems to understand right away that it was my android who had packed my lunch. As expected from a close friend of mine. What you're thinking about is probably correct. Wow, nice going, man! Well, I don't think it's really something to be congratulated for. So, how many days has it been? Huh? It better not be that chick from the other class who made you... Who made you this lunch? If it's really her, I'm gonna be over it's gonna be over between us, you know. At this point I realized that we weren't on the same page. With a disappointed look with a disappointed look, I burst this bubble. Actually, this lunch is from my Android. I told you about this, right? That I picked it up yesterday? Oh, really? <sighs> I knew it. Dr. Gears collapses onto his chair like a deflated balloon. He gives me a look of disapproval. Well, he was the one getting ahead of himself. Putting on a face that seemed to read, what was I expecting from this guy? Dr. Gears continues. 
I have to admit, that was really stupid of me. To think that such a big pessimist like you could ever come close to scoring a girlfriend. Hmm, yeah, my bad indeed. I feel a sudden rush of blood to my head. I don't appreciate you talking like a big shot when you've always been single yourself. I'm just taking my time to find the perfect match. A sad excuse from an undesirable male. I decided to taunt him a little more. But think about it. Do you really think you'll ever find someone willing to accept your weird little hobbies? How about you try again after wiping off that robot grease? You bat bastard! Talking smack just because I look a little nerdy? If you really think it's all about looks, you'll regret it someday. I hope good-looking guys like you die alone. Well, maybe I went a little too far there. But a girlfriend, huh? I've never really thought about getting one. After a bit of thinking, I made a light retort. I don't care. It's not like I'll have any trouble without living. It's not like I'll have any trouble living without one. Ho oh, ho, oh, you sure that's the case? You shouldn't lie to yourself. I'm serious. I'll eventually get married, so what's the rush? Wow, there's a limit to there's a limit to being carefree, you know. You're actually never going to get a girlfriend until you die. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. Come on, let's be a little more honest with ourselves. Don't you at least have a couple of girls that you're interested in? There's one at our school. The ones at our school are mostly pretty cute after all. Someone I'm interested in, huh? Well, who do I enjoy being around with? I don't manage to come up with an answer. It's because I've never cared for something like that. But if I were to think of a particular person... I don't have anyone like that. Hmm, you sure? Definitely. It's suspicious how you suddenly went quiet for a bit, though. You're imagining things. I'm just guessing here, but... Could it be that you actually have someone that you like? I'm telling you, I don't have anyone. Hmm, surely you can't be interested in... My body suddenly tenses up. It'd be troublesome to cause any misunderstandings. I try to quiet him down. Hey, what are you talking? Me? My mind goes numb for a while. Let me make myself clear that I'm not interested into that sort of stuff. Let me make myself clear that I'm not interested in that sort of stuff. Well, if you were with me, we'd look hot enough to make all the girls go crazy. But I don't like women. I hope you understand. Ha! You better not be thinking about debuting as a BL character without getting some surgery first. If you were in a video game, you'd be one of those most hated characters who would reduce the sales by 80% the moment you show your face. That's not true! People call me handsome all the time! Sure they do. Who exactly were we talking about? Uh, mom and dad. And my sister. I start to feel sorry for making fun of him. Anyway, why are we talking about my looks in the first place? Don't change the subject. We were discussing how you're going to spend the rest of your life alone. Oh, is that so? What I'm trying to say is that you should build up some experience in dating. I'm not the one... I'm not the one to talk for others, but you're a decent-looking guy and you never talk to girls. Why don't you get some practice in? Practice? Doesn't really interest me. I took a look at some of the girls near me. They were busily chatting away at their desks put together. The topic of their conversation had nothing I could relate to. Apart from that, it's something I wouldn't want to waste my time talking about. You try listening in, too. How good-looking this guy is, which couples are breaking up, who's getting rejected, how good these makeups are, how nice these clothes are. You really think you'll be able to join in? <sighs> he groans loudly. Who turned up the difficulty setting? See? Of course you can't, since all you ever think about are your dumb robots. H how dare you! If I wanted to, I... I'm no different. What did you say? I said I'm no different from you. I wouldn't be able to talk to them either. The high-pitched voices of the girls across the room invade my ear canals. They make my head hurt. One day, I'll also succumb to the reproductive instincts in our DNA and get myself one of those high-frequency, wave-emitting creatures to go live together. Because that's how life works. It can't be helped. My body wouldn't be able to resist the temptation. 
There's no point. Of, there's no point in forcing myself to do something that I have no interest in at this very moment, right? However late it is, I don't mind since I'm currently enjoying my independence. You really are something, you know. I don't exactly know what's going on in your head, but it's definitely not normal. Like the way you make enemies out of girls just so you can sound a bit like a hipster. Shut up, that's just who I am. In an attempt to change the subject, I shoot him a question seemingly out of nowhere. It actually is something I've been meaning to ask, though. Putting that aside, I want you to tell me something. Huh? What do you think about androids in general? Where did this come from all of a sudden? Just answer me. What do you think about androids? I just wanted to hear what a robot expert had to say. Androids, huh? Uh, they're convenient, aren't they? They make our lives easier. They just need electricity to run and don't need to be paid a salary. They don't make any any mistakes. They're friendly. The female models, models are pretty cute. No, I agree. Except for the last one. But that wasn't the kind of answer I was hoping to hear. I asked him a more specific question. Do you believe that androids have feelings? What? Androids. Do you believe they have feelings? I wanted to hear the thoughts of someone with a great appreciation for androids. He had extensive experience with a variety of models, being an avid user as well. So it's a safe bet that he'd know a bit more about them than I would. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure what kind of answer I'm expecting from them. I don't know if his thoughts will affect the way I feel, but I still want to hear what he has to say. After taking a while to think, he lays it on, he lays it on me with a straight face. Androids don't have any feelings. They don't? That's what I said, they don't. Yeah, you're right. It was obvious he, what he was going to say, but I don't feel satisfied. How could this be? Maybe I was hoping for a different answer. What's the matter? Asking such a weird question and all. Nah, that's nothing. I just suddenly got curious, that's it. Dr. Gears is giving me a confused look. I've told you this already, right? Androids are great, but you shouldn't get too attached to them. I have a feeling it might happen to you, since you don't have any experience with androids in the first place. Hmm? Come on, I'm being serious. You know why some people get so attached to androids? Why is that? It's because they want to escape from this place. I had no idea what he meant by this place. I have no choice but to ask him again. <sighs> what do you mean? In short, they want to escape reality. It's related to how fantasy movies achieve higher sales during economic depression. It's also why realistic romance movies have a hard time getting themselves into mainstream media. People can momentarily escape reality by watching fantasy movies. Romance movies need to include something glamorous or exciting to appeal to the audience. Not a lot of people would be willing to pay to watch something realistic because it'd be too bland. You get what I mean? Androids are like drugs. They can take care of everything you need, and you can also have a conversation with them. No matter how coldly you treat one, they will always respond with a smile. But this is where a number of people get delusional. Androids are caring. Androids are kind. This is what people believe in. But androids aren't human. They don't have any feelings. They don't actually listen to a sob story, nor do they understand how you feel. They only pretend to. It's nice to have something, someone that cares about you and listens to every word you say. But these people aren't facing reality. It's just like how fantasy movies aren't real. So you should never get attached to them. Much like drugs. These people are merely running away with this cruel, from this cruel world in order to take refuge in the kind of kindness of androids. I, feel, I felt that I needed to make this clear to you. Androids don't have any feelings. His words continued to linger in my mind until the end of school. I quietly repeat those words on my way home. Countless thoughts enter my mind. I find them to be mostly meaningless. I try to shut off my brain, but it's not too easy. I continue to walk in silence while staring at the pavement. Just like I always do. That's why I fail to notice her presence. I hear a familiar voice. Welcome back. How was Master's Day? It was Lucy's voice. I 
lift my head. I realize that I'm home already. And Lucy is standing at the door, smiling at me. You, why are you out here? To greet Lucy's beloved master. How was master's day? Master? I must have zoned out for a moment. I quickly recollect myself. Oh, it wasn't too bad. Really? That's good. Master? Master? What is it? Master seems a bit out of it today. Did something happen at school? No. I was just a little surprised. Surprised? Yeah. About what? She looked at me calmly. I couldn't help but open my mouth when I met her gaze. Uh, about the fact that someone was actually home waiting for me. Because that's never happened to me before. The house always used to be empty on my way home from school. And that's why I was surprised. It's nothing special. What is it? Was my master always lonely? No, not really. Was, ma was master always unhappy that no one was ever home to greet him? I'm telling you, I wasn't. The android standing before me remained silent for a while. Without saying a single word, she continues to stare into my eyes. And I feel uncomfortable. It feels like I've been told it feels like I've told her too much. The silence continues. She doesn't say anything. She doesn't delve any deeper. Instead, she softly takes my arm and begins to lead me towards the door. It's a little chilly today. Master should hurry inside. Okay. Oh, and also... Before that, please give Lucy an order. An order? What kind of order? Lucy reveals an angelic smile. The order to greet Master on his way home every day. With an order, Lucy will do everything in her ability to fulfill Master's wishes. Giving an order to a robot is the same as giving it a leash. And that's what Lucy was willing to do for me. She was willing to trade away a bit of her freedom in order to make me happy. I guess this is her own special way of being kind. Just go ahead and do as you please. It's not like I'll hate it. Understood, Master. But... But... But it's not an order. Yeah, it's not an order. No. This is just a request. I'm not forcing you to do it. So if you don't want to, you don't need to. It doesn't matter. Lucy doesn't say anything. Instead, she responds with a smile. A smile and a small nod. All the while being led inside by Lucy, my head continues to spin. Her kind eyes full of sympathy, a comforting warmth rising from her hands. Her cautiously, her cautious gesture of full to blah blah. <laughs> I know, it's only a couple of words. Uh, sometimes certain words together, they just don't make sense in my head. Uh, and I have to think about them before I read them. But, you know, of course, I'm not doing that <laughs> right now. I'm just reading. Uh, her cautious gestures, full of consideration. They're all a part of someone's programming. They're not genuine. But at this very moment, I'll tell myself that maybe it doesn't matter so much. Even though her thoughts and actions may not be real. At the very least, she was giving me the happiness I've been missing in my life. That's why I decided to skip over the small details for now. Did we get the rules? We got the rules. October 14th.
Okay, let me save right here. And uh, I think that's actually a good place to leave it. Uh, anyway, this is Hot Apostrophe, and uh, you have been watching Lucy, the eternity she wished for. Uh, this game is currently available on Steam. Uh, I believe it's on sale, so uh, you have until Tuesday to uh, pick it up at a reduced cost. It's under ten dollars, and uh, so far it's been a pretty good. Uh, it's been a pretty good story. It's a visual novel, so uh, there is actually no gameplay. Um, but you know, it won't hurt you to read a couple books in the world <laughs> every once in a while, in between shooting zombies or <laughs> other people online. And it's actually probably less than the cost of uh, a lot of books I've bought, which have been less enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> so at least this one's pleasant uh, I have a feeling I know where this is going um, so we'll see if I'm correct um, but uh, I don't know it's hard to say with these kind of games uh, whether they'll go the more esoteric route or if they'll just give you the straight sort of heartbreaking heartwarming moments uh, anyway uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching I will see you at the next stream <laughs>